Hello Year 7 and welcome to our third instalment of The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe Online. I really, really hope that you're all doing well. I really, really hope that you're all still managing to enjoy being in quarantine. You're finding some games to play. You're not going completely mad. Um, yeah, it's been so, so lovely to see everything that you guys have been sending me. Um, thank you so much for all the effort that you're putting in. I can so see that you are working hard and you should be really, really proud of yourself. So the first thing I want to do actually today is I want to start out off with some shout outs. So this has been some of the people that have put up some amazing work. It's not everyone, but these are some of the people who have been sending me some brilliant stuff and have been really, really on the ball. If your name is there, brilliant, great job. If your name isn't there, I'm sure it will be there next time. So just keep going, keep pushing. I'm really proud of you. I would also like to give a quick shout out to all the people who got 100% on the first spelling test. So this is the spelling test for chapter one. I'm going to try and read through these names really, really quickly because you all do deserve a little shout out for this. So Hakiza, Lana, Ryan, Peter, Sophie, Devon, Anna, Isla, Anae, Megan, Harry, Samuel, Jasmine, Chloe, Tamar, Chloe, Kyla, Jocelyn, Brandon, Matthew, Rajvir, Luke, Reese, Ben, Nalia, Thomas, Max, Sean, Emily, Colette, Jaya, Riley, Charlie, Mitchell, Cameron, Taryn, Emily, Callum, Isabel, Vivian, Amy, Logan, Tia, Daniel, Robbie, Charlie, Carrick, Grace, Taylor, Oliver, and Robert. Awesome, awesome job. Round of applause, round of applause. Well done. Um, really nice job from you guys. I know we've had another spelling test. We're going to keep having those spelling tests and I'm going to keep trying to give as many shout outs to as many people as we can. Thank you so much for everything that you are doing. So let's move on. I've had a few requests for the next chapter, the next installment for the story. I'm really glad that people are enjoying it. Let's start with a quick summary of chapter two. So remember in chapter two, we have our four main characters still. We've got the eldest, Peter. We've got the next eldest, Susan. Then we've got the next eldest, Edmund, and our youngest, Lucy. And right at the end of the last chapter, sorry, right at the end of chapter one, we met Mr. Tumnus. And then in chapter two, we got to know Mr. Tumnus a little bit more. We get to find out who he was as a character. So in chapter two, Lucy has climbed inside the wardrobe during a game of hide and seek. To her surprise, the wardrobe contains a whole new world. Inside this new world, Lucy meets a fawn called Mr. Tumnus. Mr. Tumnus takes Lucy back to his home. He gives her a delicious tea and he plays music for her. Mr. Tumnus and Lucy have a lovely afternoon, but suddenly Mr. Tumnus starts crying. He tells Lucy that the White Witch has paid him to kidnap any children he meets, so Lucy is in danger. But Lucy persuades Mr. Tumnus to let her go and she escapes back through the wardrobe and into our world again. And that is where we finish with Lucy bursting back through the wardrobe into the old house that they're staying in because they've been evacuated from the Blitz. And she's calling out to her siblings because she's been missing for ages. She's been gone for hours. So big question. When Lucy tells this story, will her siblings believe it? And if you have siblings... Do you think they would believe you if you told them this story? Pause the video here. Just take a minute and have a think. What's going to happen next? What's going to happen in this chapter? Hoping you have paused and now you're playing again and you are back. Let's find out what's going to happen. Chapter three, Edmund and the wardrobe. Lucy ran out of the empty room into the passage and found the other three. It's all right, she repeated. I've come back. What on earth are you talking about, Lucy? asked Susan. Why? said Lucy in amazement. Haven't you been wondering where I was? So you've been hiding, have you? said Peter. Poor old Lou, hiding and nobody noticed. You'll have to hide longer than that if you want people to start looking for you. But I've been away for hours and hours, said Lucy. The others all stared at one another. Batty, said Edmund, tapping his head, quite batty. What do you mean, Lou? asked Peter. What I said, answered Lucy. It was just after breakfast when I went into the wardrobe and I've been away for hours and hours and had tea and all sorts of things have happened. Don't be silly, Lucy, 
said Susan. We've only just come out of that room a moment ago, and you were there then. She's not being silly at all, said Peter. She's just making up a story for fun, aren't you, Lou? And why shouldn't she? No, Peter, I'm not, she said. It's, it's a magic wardrobe. There's a wood inside it, and it's snowing, and there's a fawn and a witch, and it's called Narnia. Come and see. The others did not know what to think, but Lucy was so excited that they all went back with her into the room. She rushed ahead of them, flung open the door of the wardrobe and cried, Now, go in and see for yourselves. Why, you goose, said Susan, putting her head inside and pulling the fur coats apart. It's just an ordinary wardrobe. Look, there's the back of it. Then everyone looked in and pulled the coats apart, and they all saw, Lucy herself saw, a perfectly ordinary wardrobe. There was no wood and no snow, only the back of the wardrobe with hooks on it. Peter went in and wrapped his knuckles on it to make sure that it was solid. A jolly good hoax, Lou, he said as he came out again. You really have taken us in, I must admit. We half believed you. But it wasn't a hoax at all, said Lucy, really and truly. It was all different a moment ago. Honestly, it was. I promise. Come, Lou, said Peter. That's going a bit far. You've had your joke. Hadn't you better drop it now? Lucy grew very red in the face and tried to say something, but she hardly knew what she was trying to say and she burst into tears. For the next few days, she was very miserable. She could have made it up with the others quite easily at any moment if she could have brought herself to say that the whole thing was only a story made up for fun. But Lucy was a very truthful girl and she knew that she was really in the right. She couldn't bring herself to say this. The others thought she was telling a lie and a silly lie, too, made her very unhappy. The two elder ones did this without meaning to do it, but Edmund could be spiteful, and on this occasion, he was spiteful. He sneered and jeered at Lucy, and kept on asking her if she'd found any other new countries in other cupboards all over the house. What made it worse was that these days ought to have been delightful, the weather was fine and they were out of doors from morning to night, bathing, fishing, climbing trees, birds nesting and lying in the heather. But Lucy could not properly enjoy any of it. And so things went on until the next wet day. That day, when it came to the afternoon and there was still no sign of a break in the weather, they decided to play hide and seek. Susan was it. And as soon as the others scattered to hide, Lucy went to the room where the wardrobe was. She didn't mean to hide in the wardrobe because she knew that would only set the others talking again about the whole wretched business. But she did want to have one more look inside it. For by this time, she was beginning to wonder herself whether Narnia and the Fawn had not been a dream. The house was so large and complicated and full of hiding places that she thought she would have time to have one look in the wardrobe and then hide somewhere else. But as soon as she reached it, she heard steps in the passage outside, and then there was nothing for it but to jump into the wardrobe and hold the door closed behind her. She did not shut it properly, because she knew that it is very silly to shut oneself into a wardrobe, even if it is not a magic one. Now, the steps she had heard were those of Edmund, and he came into the room just in time to see Lucy vanishing into the wardrobe. He at once decided to get into it himself, not because he thought it a particularly good place to hide, but because he wanted to go on teasing her about her imaginary country. He opened the door. There were the coats hanging up as usual, and a smell of mothballs and darkness and silence, and no sign of Lucy. She thinks I'm Susan come to catch her, said Edmund to himself, and so she's keeping very quiet in at the back. He jumped in and shut the door, forgetting what a very foolish thing this is to do. Then he began feeling about for Lucy in the dark. He had expected to find her in a few seconds and was very surprised when he did not. He decided to open the door again and let in some light, but he couldn't find the door either. He didn't like this at all and began groping wildly in every direction. He even shouted out, Lucy, Lou, where are you? I know you're here. There was no answer, 
and Edmund noticed that his own voice had a curious sound. Not the sound you expect in a cupboard, but a kind of open air sound. He also noticed that he was unexpectedly cool, and then he saw a light. Thank goodness, said Edmund. The door must have swung open of its own accord. He forgot all about Lucy and went toward the light, which he thought was the open door of the wardrobe. But instead of finding himself stepping out into the spare room, he found himself stepping out from the shadow of some thick, dark fir trees into an open place in the middle of a wood. There was crisp, dry snow under his feet and more snow lying on the branches of the trees. Overhead, there was a pale blue sky, the sort of sky one sees on a fine winter day in the morning. Straight ahead of him, he saw between the tree trunks the sun just rising very red and clear. Everything was perfectly still, as if he were the only living creature in that country. There was not even a robin or a squirrel among the trees, and the woods stretched as far as he could see in every direction. He shivered. He now remembered that he had been looking for Lucy, and also how unpleasant he had been to her about her imaginary country, which now turned out not to have been imaginary at all. He thought that she must be somewhere quite close, and so he shouted, Lucy! Lucy! I'm here too! Edmund! There was no answer. She's angry about all the things I've been saying lately, thought Edmund. And though he did not like to admit that he had been wrong, he also did not much like being alone in this strange, cold, quiet place. So he shouted again, I say, Lou, I'm sorry I didn't believe you. I see now that you were right all along. Do come out. Make it Pax. Pax, guys, means peace. It's peace in Latin. So let's make peace. Let's stop arguing. Come and talk to me again. Let's make up. But still, there was no answer. Just like a girl, said Edmund to himself, sulking somewhere and won't accept an apology. He looked round him again and decided he did not much like this place and had almost made up his mind to go home when he heard, very far off in the wood, a sound of bells. He listened, and the sound came nearer and nearer, and at last there swept into sight a sledge drawn by two reindeer. The reindeer were about the size of Shetland ponies, and their hair was so white that even the snow hardly looked white compared with them. Their branching horns were gilded and shone like something on fire when the sunrise caught them. Their harness was of scarlet leather and covered with bells. On the sledge, driving the reindeer, sat a fat dwarf, who would have been about three feet high if he had been standing. He was dressed in a polar bear's fur, and on his head he wore a red hood with a long gold tassel hanging down from its point. His huge beard covered his knees and served him instead of a rug. But behind him, on a much higher seat in the middle of the sledge, sat a very different person, a great lady, taller than any woman that Edmund had ever seen. She also was covered in white fur up to her throat, and held a long, straight golden wand in her right hand, and wore a golden crown on her head. Her face was white, not merely pale, but white, like snow or paper or icing sugar, except for her very red mouth. It was a beautiful face in other respects, but proud and cold and stern. The sledge was a fine sight as it came sweeping towards Edmund, with the bells jingling and the dwarf cracking his whip and the snow flying up on each side of it. Stop, said the lady and the dwarf pulled the reindeer up so sharp that they almost sat down. Then they recovered themselves and stood champing their bits and blowing. In the frosty air, the breath coming out of their nostrils looked like smoke. And what, pray, are you? said the lady, looking hard at Edmund. I'm, I'm, my name's Edmund, said Edmund rather awkwardly. He did not like the way she looked at him. The lady frowned. Is that how you address a queen? She asked, looking sterner than ever. I beg your pardon, your majesty. I didn't know, said Edmund. 
not know the Queen of Narnia, cried she. Ha, you shall know us better hereafter. But I repeat, what are you? Please, your majesty, said Edmund, I don't know what you mean. I'm at school, at least I was. It's the holidays now. That is the end of chapter three. Ooh, have you noticed, lovelies, how C.S. Lewis is very good at ending a chapter just as we meet a new character? So at the end of chapter one, we literally just met Mr. Tumnus. And then now at the end of chapter three, we've just met this new character, this new person. I will leave it to you to have a little think about who we think this person might be. So a few questions that I just want you to take away. I want you to have a little think about before we start doing a bit more analysis on this chapter in our next couple of lessons. Number one, with what you know about Edmund, do you think he's going to apologise to Lucy now that he knows she's telling the truth? Do you think he's that kind of person? Is he going to apologise again? Are the four siblings going to come together and uh, start exploring Narnia together? Question number two, who is it that Edmund's just met? Do we think we've had this person referenced before? Do you have any ideas? Have a little think. And finally. I do like my predictions. I like people to do a little prediction. It's quite good fun. What do you think is going to happen in the next chapter? So you don't have to submit any work for these questions. They're just here for you guys to have a think about and a consider. Remember, also on the uh, cover sheet for this lesson, there's another six words that I want you to find definitions for and you're going to learn the spellings. That spelling test is going to be on Thursday. Well, well done for all of the work that you have been putting in. You're doing so well, guys. You really, really are. I know this isn't easy for anyone. So I just want to leave you with saying that this hedgehog is cheering for you because you can do anything. If we can get through this and we can keep sane and we can keep learning and we can keep friends, then we really can do everything. We're doing brilliantly. Take care of yourselves. I will see you again soon. Remember, you can email me, message me on Show My Homework if you have any questions at all. Great. See you later, guys. Well done.